Hey guys, what's up? So I'm creating a new list for the top 10 programming languages of 2017. Yes, I am a fortune teller. Uh, I can see into the future and 2017 is right around the corner. This list is going to be more official based on mainstream feedback. Basically, you know, what are the top languages out there that are dominating the markets? We're not going to mention languages like Rust or Clojure or TypeScript or Elixir or all these other languages that literally shouldn't be mentioned in the top 10. Um, they're great languages. Nobody, I mean, this stuff is, uh, there's no right and wrong answer here. It's just an opinion. But if you just want, you know, the simple, you know, boring list of what are the top 10 languages. And when I say boring, it just simply means that there's not going to be any shocker for the sake of being a shocker. Um, I created a, a list about a month ago where I mentioned TypeScript. TypeScript is going to be a big language for 2017, but it probably shouldn't be in the top 10. Uh, another language like assembly. Assembly is making a, a pretty strong, you know, uh, if you look at something like the TOB index, assembly jobs seem to be out there. But um, in the real world, you're not going to really find a whole lot of assembly. Like if I, I'm in the D.C. area, if I'm looking for a job in D.C., I don't see a whole lot of assembly jobs. I see uh, a lot of what we're going to talk about in this list. So let's get into the mainstream stream list here and start talking about it. All right, number ten, Perl. We're not gonna we're not gonna shit on Perl this time. So Perl needs to be in the top ten. Perl used to be the Swiss Army chainsaw, held the the web together with duct tape and uh, scotch tape and all and glue and all that crap. But uh, Perl is still widely used. It's a great scripting language. Um, it's going to continue to be popular. Perl, the newest st standard, was also just released last year. Number nine, Ruby. Everybody's like, where is Ruby on the last list? Well, Ruby got hosed because I decided to add Ruby. Uh, well, really, I kicked off Ruby because I wanted to be able to add a functional language like Haskell. But in order to have a, a language like Haskell or Scala listed in the top 10 or F sharp, you have to boot one of these larger languages. But it's really it doesn't do any justice because Ruby is going to dominate uh, over those languages. Like I mentioned, there's going to be way more jobs in Ruby and opportunity for you in Ruby than there is going to be for Rust or Clojure or Elixir and all this other stuff. So I'm, you know, I'm sorry to say it, but that's the mainstream, you know, mentality. That's what people want to hear, and it's honestly the truth. Number eight is Swift. So Swift is going to be Apple's newest language. Essentially, it's, uh, you know, some people say it's Apple's attempt to make Objective C easier to deal with. That programmers didn't want to have to do the Objective C, and it was too hard for them. So they decided to create a Python, a uh, more simplistic language. You know, not really similar to Python, but a simplistic language when compared to Objective C. So Swift is the Apple language. Every programming uh, company, software company has a language. I mean, Google has their language now with Golang and uh, Microsoft has C Sharp and Apple now has Swift. PHP, everybody really got pissed off when I didn't mention PHP. PHP runs a lot of websites out there. It's WordPress, all the the e-commerce shops, e like uh, Open Cart, Magento, Presta Shop, and all these other things. If you want to do e-commerce, PHP is almost your only option, it seems like. Uh, but it, it's still going to dominate. It's really it's a rather terrible language when you compare it to something like C Sharp or, or Java. But uh, you know, PHP it does grow on people. It can get the job done, and a lot of people make a full time living on PHP. So you can't really hate on them for that. It's just that I, I would never recommend it as a first language, just because it does teach some very terrible habits. Number six is Python. Python arguably deserves to be higher than this but in a real world list um, you know if we're looking at this as objectively as possible there's going to be more opportunities for the jobs that I mentioned after or for the languages I mentioned after Python here but Python is going to make this list at six it's an awesome language it's a language for web robotics bioinformatics for pretty much everything Python's involved in it but it falls at number six here Number five is JavaScript. JavaScript was my number one language in 2016. It was also, I think, the number two language on the list that includes some of the shockers that I had on there, like Haskell and Assembly and TypeScript. But in this list, this more predictable list, JavaScript is going to sit at five. Number four is C++, the programming language for games. Uh, Barney Straustrup came out of Bell Labs in the 1980s and created C++ and actually worked for what would remain of Bell Labs all the way up until I think um, end of the 90s for sure, uh, but still is a, you know it's a very powerful language. It powers most of the video games that we see, so a lot of video game engines are written in C and C++. 
and there's still going to be a lot of opportunity out there for C++. In fact, it's a it's a very humongous code base when it, when you talk about all the legacy code written in it. Number three is C Sharp, Microsoft's language of choice. Microsoft language is now open source, and I had this as the number one as more of a shocker. But if, like I said, we're looking at this completely objectively, uh, then C Sharp probably belongs at number three. They're doing a lot of stuff to open source the language, uh, but it's really not a, an option outside of Microsoft, uh, at least at the present. And you guys are going to be like, well, Mono, and you're going to tell me how it's open source now and how it works on Win, uh, Linux and all that shit. And I'm going to tell you that it doesn't, uh, not, at, not at the the time that I'm creating this video, and it wasn't five months ago when I was trying to use the Kestrel web server for a .NET Core, uh, ASP.NET Core 1.0 site that I wanted to put on my a Linux Ubuntu server, but it didn't work because I needed the goddamn database driver and there was no database driver for Postgres or MySQL. So I was forced to use Entity Framework in order to be able to use one of those other things. And maybe I don't want to use Entity Framework, but it, it's not a, a problem with the project itself. It's just that it's relatively new. So C Sharp is going to dominate an enterprise development. It's going to dominate for anything Microsoft and Microsoft's a humongous company. But it's not truly the open source vision that Microsoft uh, wants for the language, or at least that's what they say that they want. So I think it's going to be a couple more years before we truly see you know, C Sharp as a, a viable option for my Linux Ubuntu server. And when I say my, I mean for other indie developers and things like that out there as well. Uh, but in the meantime, C Sharp is, a, is an awesome language as far as like language design. It's one of the best I've ever seen. Well, actually, it's the best I've ever seen. Um, so next, number two is uh, is uh, the C programming language, the godfather of all higher level languages that pretty much every language on this list takes after. So uh, if you look at Python or JavaScript or PHP or Perl or Ruby or Java or any of these other languages, you're going to see that they are built on top of C. So it's C code. Uh, and then C is obviously considered to be uh, a high level language too when you compare it to some, something like assembly. Uh, but not being too specific about everything, um, C is, uh, is definitely going to be on the list. Dennis Ritchie, the creator of C at Bell Labs in the 1970s, is the uh, greatest programmer of all time. Most, uh, def most definitely the, the most important la uh, programming uh, programmer of all time. Dennis Ritchie, look him up if you guys never heard of him. And then number one on our predictable list of the top programming languages is going to be Java. Java, why? Because it, pro it dominates the job market. It's truly open source, so you can write Java on both Linux and Windows, and it, run it runs. It's also the language that's used for the Android SDK, so if you want to write native Android apps, you're going to have an easy time doing it in Java. If you want to get a job in enterprise development, Java is there for you. If you want to get into some embedded systems and shit like that, then uh, even Java has, has a market there. But... Um, you know, even even games. So Java's all over the place. Uh, so is C Sharp. So is C. So is C plus plus. Any one of these top ten languages, you're going to be able to most likely be able to find a job. Uh, there's going to be opportunities there for you. This list is very predictable. But to be honest with you, um, a, a shit storm gets raised when I'm not predictable. So uh, it seems that the masses want the predictability, and that's what this list is for. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and have a good night. Bye.